The Teradek Surf Pro is a small yet powerful streaming device that allows 1080p, so full HD streaming, to iOS devices with just a two frame delay. And it can do so to up to 10 different devices at any given point. So that can be an iPhone or an iPad. You just need to make sure that you've got an A7 processor or newer. It does this by acting as its own access point, so you can connect directly to its Wi-Fi hotspot that it generates, or you can connect it to a local area network connection that you have, and then you just connect your device to that same network. Once you've done that, you can then download the free application from the App Store, it's called Viewer, and this application comes with a whole host of different professional monitoring tools. Another key selling point of it is that it can do up to four different live video streams, so it's perfect for live multi-camera setups because you'll be able to monitor each of those cameras on just the one device. In this video, I'm gonna give you a run through of all the different features that you get with the Teradek Surf Pro and also on the viewer application itself. Firstly, let's look at the Surf Pro itself, which is all packed in this blue aluminum housing. It has two quarter inch threads, one underneath and the other on the side for mounting. We've got an LCD screen and a joystick button on the front that allows for navigation control of the menu. And on the side, we have the two antenna ports. On the rear, we have a 3G SDI and a HDMI input to connect your video source. We've then got an ethernet port should you want to physically connect to the Surf Pro and a two pin Limo connector for power. So we've currently got the Surf Pro connected up to the FS5 and it's mounted on there by the included hot shoe mount that you get with it. And we've got it powered from the mains power supply. But with this taking the popular two pin Limo connections, you can of course adapt that for something that you may already be using, such as DTAP connections and V-mount batteries, such as an Anton Bauer battery here. So to get this system up and running, you connect your video source into either one of the inputs, along with the power, and then you switch it on. Now the serve basically has two different operating modes. It can act as a wireless access point, which means you connect your device directly to its own Wi-Fi hotspot that it generates, which is perfect if you're just monitoring the one camera. The second is called infrastructure mode, where you connect it to a local wireless network and you then connect your device to the same network. You'd want to use this mode if you're monitoring more than the one live camera feed. As mentioned in the Viewer app, you can view up to four. For this run through, we're gonna be using the Surf Pro in its access point mode, with just the single video source feeding into it from the Sony FS5. The Surf Pro can ingest a 1080p signal at up to 60 frames a second. So you'll need to make sure that your video source feeding into it is not going to supersede that. The first LED light will illuminate and the screen will display the incoming video signal resolution once the Surf Pro detects an input that is compatible. Now the next step is to go into your iOS device and go into your Wi-Fi and then you'll want to look out for the Surf Pro's Wi-Fi network that you've set up and just connect to it. Now you'll need to have the viewer application installed on your device and as I said before it's a free app available on the App Store called Viewer V U E R. And if you are interested in the Surf Pro, then I recommend that you download this app, have a play with all the features that you'll get on there, and really, you know, get to grips with what you'll actually get with this investment and make sure it's the right choice for you. Now, because this is using Wi-Fi, which is openly licensed and is a shared spectrum of the airwaves, you're never really gonna get a guarantee on its performance. Now, Teradix say that in the most pristine environments, you'll get up to 300 feet of transmission before you'll start to struggle. Now, of course, this can't be guaranteed, like I said, because of the environment you're filming in. So if you want to make sure that you're going to get that sort of performance, then I suggest that you invest in a industrial style router or access point that's really going to pump that signal volume out. Now, Teradek do one, it's called the Teradek Link. So once you've downloaded the app, we can now launch it. So we'll launch the View app by clicking on it there. And you'll see that you're brought to the welcome screen. It's a blank screen. We hit camera at the top left because we need to assign the camera feed into one of the four banks that we have available, A, B, C, or D. So I can see there, at the bottom left, we've got our Surf Pro that we have here on the FS5. Tap that once and it then fills up camera A's bank. Then we can press done. Then we're taken to the main screen. Now it will say loading and we'll see that the image has now been brought up onto the screen there. Now, I'll run through the tools that you'll get with this. At the bottom left, we've got the tools button. We've got two banks of tools available for us. We hit the histogram. It brings up the histogram monitor at the top left. Tap it again and it goes away. Now we can do this for each of the different tool sets. We've got waveform monitor, we've got vector scope, false color, peaking, focus assist. We've got look, which I'll go into more detail in a second. We press tools, we'll go down into the next bank. We've got frame lines. Frame grab, 
frame compare, distort, magnify, and we've got video and audio. So, to go into any of the settings of these tools, to really configure them to how you want to use them, you just press and hold on the one that you want to modify, and then it'll bring up the settings. Now, histogram, waveform, monitor, and vector soap all have very similar settings. So in display mode, we can do it full screen, we can overlay it, or we can do top and bottom. In the type, we've got Luma, RGB Parade, and RGB Overlay. I'm gonna keep mine on Luma. We've got opacity control, and we've got the position that we wanna have the tool. And we can also control the size of the overlay. So as I said, you can do the same for the waveform monitor, and you can do the same for the vector scope. In terms of false color, if we go into this setting, we've got two different types, discrete and full. And we've also got zebras hidden in there as well. And you can set the percentage at which you want these zebras to appear on your image. We've got peaking, again, with a simple control. And we've got focus assist, should you want to use that instead of peaking. We can change the color and the intensity. Now I'll come back to look. We've got frame lines, which is very handy if you want to finish your video, which you've shot in 16.9, in a more, let's say, cinematic aspect ratio, such as 2.39. And we can change the color of those frame lines, and we can even add an additional one as well, should you need it. A nice feature is that you can also do a custom frame line. So you can literally type in, so if I want to do, let's say, um, three aspect ratio for a really tight widescreen look, I can manually put that in there. And to make it even clearer, I can black out the rest of the frame. So I've just got that really widescreen image for what I'm going to try and finish it in post. So let's take that off. We've got frame grab, which takes a still of the frame that we've got on there. And then on frame compare, what we can do, we can overlay that still image and compare it with what we're seeing now. Now, if I move the camera slightly, you'll see more of that effect. So I've panned the camera to the right. And we can now use the frame compare to see the difference between the two frames. This is really gonna be something that's useful for, let's say, continuity if you wanna check your scene setups or if you're shooting over multiple days, you're coming back to the same setup, you wanna see what the last shot was, you can quickly just pull that frame compare tool up and away you go. Now this frame grab tool would be really useful as well if you're doing green screen work and compositing people into different locations and environments. So for example, if you already have your environment mocked up that you're gonna be putting the person that you're interviewing or filming into, you can load that in as a frame grab. So let's just quickly leave the app and just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna take a picture of Ben, our cameraman. So we've got that picture now on the iPad. I'm gonna go back into the view application, into the menu, bring up the full menu, and then frame grabs. Import frame grab from camera. Now, of course, this frame grab could be something that you've mocked up in After Effects or you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, export that out and then you can load that into this application. So now that we've imported that into the app, we can then leave the settings menu and in the frame compare menu, we can load that image that we've just taken in and overlay it. So if you imagine that the back plate that we're shooting now is the background that you want to put Ben into, we can then see if that's going to match up or vice versa. So it's a really powerful tool to have. We've got distort, which if you're using anamorphic lenses, we've got a de-squeeze function built into this application. And again, you can put in your own custom de-squeeze there if you're using any, let's say, vintage or obscure lenses. You can also flip the image around as well. We've got magnify if you really want to check that focus. And you can move this magnifying screen to whatever you want by tapping and moving it on the iPad that I've got here. Go into those settings and we can do small, medium and large magnification. And again, we can change the color of magnification box. Now, the last two on this tab are video. Tap that and it brings up 
all the stats of our video stream that we're getting in here, we can see that we're doing a 1920, 1080, so a full HD stream. We've got the bit rate, the stream delay, and the frame rate. And if I pull into that, I can put that delay down to a minimum and bump up the bit rate and make sure that we're on the maximum resolution. And of course, you can also do audio in here. So it supports stereo audio, and you can control directly the iPad volume within the application so you never need to leave. And you can decide which side you want those audio bars. Now, let's go back to the more interesting tool, which is the looks. So I'll bring this menu up, and you can see that we've got CDL and LUT menus. So CDLs are color decision lists. We've got some that are already built into here, such as saturate, you know, cooler look. And we've also got some built-in LUTs. So at the moment I'm feeding the FS5 signal, which we're shooting in S-Log2. You'll see we've got an S gamma to Rec 709 LUT there. So if I wanted this to be sort of my final image, which looks like this weird, strange green hue to the image, might be what I'm going for, but I'll be able to preview this live in the viewer application. And you've got this nice look split screen menu as well to do that. But what you can also do is bring up the color wheels. And it gives you much more refined control of your image and how you may actually want it to look. So if I do a very rough grade here, say this is what I'm going for, let's just turn just off. Make this quick look. And then pull up the menu and what I can do is I can save that CDL. So save as Chris's look. And that's now saved. And of course I can preview that with a tap of the button. And when I come to another filming session, I'll be able to just load that CDL back up to get a real look for what my project is gonna potentially look like when I get into post. Now, even though we're only using the OneServe Pro to stream the one video stream to the iPad here, like I said before, we can do up to four. We can view up to four different HD streams coming in. But what we can do to make use of those four inputs is go back to the screen where we assigned our camera, press it, three more times, press done. And now what that will have done is replicated the input that we have over each of those channels. So if we press at the top right to go into our split screen view, you can see now that we're viewing all four of those different streams. The top left we've got with our look that we applied. And then the other three are just viewing it in S-Log2, which is what we're sending. The really cool thing that I can do is tap onto each one of those. I could have a different tool being displayed on each of them. So I can monitor all the different aspects of my image on just the one screen. You can go into each of these windows by double tapping on the screen and double tapping again will take you back out of it. It's really handy because you can put a couple of different LUTs on there and you can even make these tools full screen so it takes up that section. It's so a really powerful monitoring tools. So you can have this set up however you want, depending on what it is that you want to look at in your image. And in this viewing mode, you can really see how you would make use of this if you're doing something like a multi-camera setup and you'd be seeing all those different live feeds coming in onto your device. So they've had a rundown of the Teradek Serve Pro and the Viewer app and all the features that you'll get with it. And if it is something that you're interested in, then I would urge you to download the application, have a play, look at the features that you'll get and see if it's really going to work for what you're doing. I think it's a really powerful tool because you can be on set, on location, whether or not you're with crew or with your client. You might not need to lug all those big expensive external monitors. You can just bring along some iPads or iPhones and you know quite a few people might already have them anyway in the pockets. You can simply just tell them to download the app and connect to the Surf Pro. For more information on filmmaking, tips, tricks, or interviews, news and reviews, then check out wex.co.uk.